hi everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My guest today is Leslie Goth. She's amazing. You guys are going to love her. You guys know me. I kind of skip over all the, the stuff. You can find out her bio and all that on her, her website if you want all their credentials. But she's, I'm just going to say it. She's just a badass and I love talking to her. <laughs> so you guys, if you know this, you know that you're on my Patreon channel. If you're on Patreon, you're allowed to give me questions. Usually what happens is if you send me a question, then I will go to the angels and the guides and get clarification for you. And then I'll do a recorded message. And that comes on the Patreon as a group Q and a answer, because almost everything that it seems like those of us that are kind of drawn together, we all go through similar things at similar times. And so even though if it might be personal to somebody, there's always somebody else that can benefit from hearing. The only thing is this one, this question that came in, I felt like I needed the expert. So I called in Leslie to come and help us today with this. And what it was, what, um, the question is, can you do a recording on mental health about this time and for this time? Um, I have a brother who suffers from some mental health issues and doesn't want to go to the doctor um, and doesn't want to take medicine. So she says, um, as a family, how can we deal with that? Of course, with love and compassion and patience, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it's really scary. What yeah. can we do? And I know we're not the only ones who deal with these mental health issues. So from the woo-woo standpoint, where, where I would be able to address this is everybody's here for their own sole purpose. So you can ask yourself, what am I learning from this relationship with my brother, right? Like what, for my spiritual growth, what am I learning? Am I learning compassion on a deeper level? Am I learning patience on another level? Am I learning boundaries that he has every right to choose what he wants to choose in his life, right? But the mental health side of it, I needed to call in the expert. So Leslie, let's just start this chat. I kind of gave you a heads okay. up on what we wanted to cover today. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love it because I know you kind of mix a little bit of the woo-woo because you're an empath, you feel things, and it, which helps Oh, you. absolutely. Yeah. And so I want to kind of, from, from your psychology standpoint, like how do we help somebody? Um, how do we blend that? I know all the woo-woo answers I would give, but I really want to focus on the mental health of it because I feel like that's so prominent right now. And I always talk about things. There's five pillars. Yeah. Mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, and galactic energies are all there. This one is definitely like a human thing that we have to deal with. And mental health is so important. Yeah. And I don't think you can separate any of those five pieces, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we're all, it's all connected. It's always, mm -hmm. And I just, you know, when we have a family member that is, you know, ill or hurting and the refusing to, to steps to, to, to just be healthy and well or stable, it's, it's the worst feeling in the world, you know, to have a loved one that is just not open to receiving the help that they want. It, it, we feel so powerless, we feel so helpless, and we tend to kind of unintentionally maybe do a lot of the wrong things. And so um, I really feel for whoever, you know, sent that question, and she's not alone. I mean, there's just so many people that are really struggling and hurting out there who have major, you know, diagnoses and are refusing treatment for a variety of reasons. Um, I do love what you said as far as, you know, letting this person kind of, especially if it's an adult, right? I mean, I'm assuming it's an adult. Um, they need to be able to make their own decisions. Now, if this person is in danger to himself or someone else under the mental health act, and I would recommend that people Google that, um, that they can either have a doctor, you know, demand basically an assessment where then he can be taken to the hospital and, and they will assess and see, you know, if he's a harm to himself or someone else. A family member can also do that. There's a part of the Mental Health Act where a family member can go to the courts or justice of the peace and say, hey, I need my brother, my father, my mother, my, my daughter, whoever um, assessed. And then the police go pick this person up, take him or her to a hospital where then they do get medically assessed to see if they are in danger to self or others. And then they can take the proper steps from there and hold that person for 72 hours and see if they can, you know, try to do some intervention. Right. Um, if the person is not in danger to self or others, like it's just about then having loving boundaries and saying what's 
what's okay and what's not okay and what they're willing to tolerate and not tolerate. And I think in part of your question, you had mentioned kids were not wanting to like go to um, a family member's house because maybe the, the person that was struggling was there. And it was kind of scary for the little kids when that person was acting out. And I would say that's a really good boundary is not to have the little kids around that and to really make sure that the little ones feel safe and protected and secure. That's a good boundary. I mean, that's a really good boundary if someone is, is acting in ways that are, that are scary or inappropriate. Right. 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 So I, I love that. I, I don't think it's, I know what you're talking about, like the mental health hold and things like that. I really don't think mm-hmm. based on the way she reached out, I don't think it's quite to that extreme, but I Great. love what you're talking about <laughs> yeah. compassion and yes. where people think that they're doing, they think they're doing something but good, but they're actually not. And I think it comes a lot to what my guys have been talking about this year, because it's like, this is like a grow up year. Like it's time to grow up and, and, and it's breaking the dysfunctional human condition. is something that my guides have said. And I think a lot of that has to do with the idea. And I know this word sometimes gets used differently, but codependency, like we are, yes. we know how we, we have become so unhealthily enmeshed yes with yeah. other people and and we like we don't know how to um how to be our own person because we mm-hmm. were so you know don't do this because it'll hurt their feelings or don't do that because it'll hurt that person's feelings or you just have to suck it up or it might make it worse right yeah, there's all of these things that we kind of learn as we're growing up and my guys are like that needs to stop the interesting yeah. dynamic again from the woo side is we've got this whole Neptune thing going on where it's a Neptune retrograde and it's really intense and it's like teaching us how are we, what it's supposed to teach us is how can we still be knowing that we are all one, but still knowing what's good mm-hmm. for us. It's like, how do we self nurture so that we can be the best we can be for the collective? And I think that's where the boundaries come in. And I think, so one of the things that people out of just their own fear and frustration might say to a loved one is like, you need to get help or, you know, um, you're not, you're sick or you're not well, or, you know, like, and, and really just kind of, it feels more attacking to the person. And so a way to kind of not be codependent, but to still be loving and supportive is to really use those I feel statements and to share like, look, brother or sister, whoever you are, like, I love you and I'm scared. Like, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm noticing in some of your actions or behaviors. And I'm really worried about you. How can I help you? How can I support you so that you're okay, right? But again, it's like, you're okay. And maybe if you're not okay, I can still be okay. Mm -hmm. even if you're not okay. And to share with that person from an, what you're experiencing and own what you're experiencing instead of like, you're sick, you need to go get help. You need to get on medication. Right. You need therapy. You're crazy. You know, all these right things is that person is just going to repel one more thing that I really think is important is even when a family member is struggling and and maybe you have to set some boundaries where you can't be around them. Always stay in contact with that person. Always stay in touch. Let them know that when they are ready to get help, you are there and ready to love and support them in any way that you can. Right. The other side of that that I see a lot of times, and and you know this, like when I'm doing the work, I'm like, if you're not ready to take ownership of all of your own stuff, like might as well not work with me because otherwise we're, we're not going to get there. Right. And so, and, and I find that too. Like if you're not yeah. ready to do the work, that's fine. Then, but yeah. Tell me when you are. Right. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know that's kind of, yeah. so yeah. like when I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, we know that we can only control ourselves, Right. So if this person is an adult that can make their own decisions, which is what we're assuming for this scenario. Cause, and I looked back, I was looking at my phone a minute ago to make sure it doesn't say, but I'm assuming that he's an adult because the person is an adult. It's their brother. So um, yeah, I'm kind of getting that feeling too. Yeah. yeah. And so um, what, what I would say, like where I would go with it is you can't control their behavior, 
the only thing that you can do is control yourself. So if they're not willing to get help, it's not going to do any good. And you don't need to be a victim of it. You don't need to say, well, they're making me feel this right. way or they make me un un happy or they make me worried or they whatever. Like you have mm -hmm. to be in a space of, okay, I, this is the choices that they're going to make. Mm -hmm. I need mm -hmm. to respect that boundary that they're big boy. They can do what they want. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then it comes back to the idea of what can I do? Well, I can know that this is the choice he makes. And even though it makes me uncomfortable and I'm not happy, I need to keep myself and my family safe and so therefore Absolutely. I would have yes. that saying, I love you, but if you are going to act out, be drunk, have drugs, whatever it is that those things that you don't want your family mm -hmm. around, that's when you would put that boundary and say, yes, yeah, yes. Safety for you and your own family has to be the pretty. Um, and sometimes that gets really, really scary because then, you know, a lot of those really bad scenarios or when then that family member becomes homeless mm -hmm. or they're on this, you know, they're on the streets yeah. or maybe they are doing drugs. I mean, it's scary. It's yeah. really, really, everything that we're saying is a lot easier said than done. Oh yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Right. Um, the other thing I was just thinking too is, so going back to what my guides have been saying, the, the two phrases that I've been getting a lot this year are breaking the dysfunctional human condition and radical responsibility. So, and when they're talking about radical responsibility, they're talking about radical responsibility for yourself. And right. when, <laughs> so when they say that, it's like um, the breaking the dysfunctional human condition part is that we've kind of been taught like, well, they're our family. We've got to stay. Like we can't, mm -hmm. we have to stay in it. We have to stay in this mess. And that's mm -hmm. so messed up. Like, but I know that, I know that that happens because I experienced it too. Like, yeah, they're sure. messed up and whatever. And you feel like you're a victim of it. You have to just put up with it because that's part of your family because we don't know how to put healthy boundaries. We don't even know what it means to have healthy boundaries. So for right. somebody just starting out with that, where you're really feeling guilty because you're like, no, this is my family and I'm supposed to spend time with them, even though I know the barbecue is going to be a nightmare and I'm supposed to go there, even though, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Listen, functioning under that kind of duty and obligation is it just squashes the spirit. It squashes your soul. It, it sucks the life right out of you. And so what I tell people a lot is like, it doesn't matter if it's a family member or not. Relationships are relationship. And if it's toxic or unsafe or in any way detrimental to you and your family, it doesn't matter who that other person is. Bound are healthy bound to God given principle for us that creates safety and it's loving to have boundaries. People mm -hmm. don't understand that. It's one of the yeah. most loving things you can do in a relationship is to have boundaries. Right. Right. It's a great way to love others. Which and it's a we really don't, great way to love yourself. It, yeah. And, and we don't learn that, but it's actually no. good for us to have boundaries because of when we learn how to have our own boundaries, it helps the next generations learn to have healthy functioning relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we get what we deserve in every relationship, not we get what we deserve, we get what we think we deserve in every relationship. And so when the boundaries are low, when they really need to be higher, I mean, then we're going to get what we're going to get, you know what right. I mean? And so each relationship, you might have a different boundary. And that's okay. It's a really well, great and multiple way to... little boundaries inside of each relationship. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. And then it's not just setting the boundary the first time. It's then reinforcing it and keeping that boundary up because right. other people tend to not like our boundaries, and they want to push and they want to test. Right. And especially in the beginning, like if you haven't ever had boundaries, the first time you start learning about boundaries and setting boundaries for yourself they are going to retaliate with everything they've got. And so you, I always tell people when they're starting to learn boundaries, like you've got to learn, like when you start doing the boundaries, they're going to feel it. So this goes, so this is so interesting that we're talking about boundaries from the, from your standpoint of being a psychologist, mm -hmm. but my woo woo side, it's like, that's where I see cords and energy that's messy. And, and, and I talk about that with people all the time. Those cords. I yeah. do. Right. <laughs> because you do, you energetically are like stuck. Yeah. yeah. We're connected and you're stuck. And so then again, unintentionally, we end up enabling the behavior that is making us 
struggle or suffer and happy with, right? We right. end up enabling it because of guilt, obligation, duty. We feel like, oh, you know, they said they're sorry or they said they'd get better. So I'll give them 50 bucks or I'll do mm-hmm. this or I'll let them come to the dinner tonight or whatever. And we get, we feel sorry. We don't maintain that boundary. And then we're just enabling the whole cycle to start all over again. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's the hard part. Especially when you're first, first learning about really hard, and you've never had boundaries before, and you'll get thrown everything in the book. Oh well, you just don't even care about this family anymore, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, that's a oh, big yeah. one. Yeah, especially if you're the only one in the family setting boundaries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. That yeah, is really exactly. Super hard. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, the, on top of all of this that we're talking about, I feel like this happens all the time, but right now we are in this mix of energy from like, if we look at astrology and we look at the, like the collective energy and what's happening out in the, in the world, like all of this is, is compounding. And the best way I could explain it the other day was um, it's almost like the energy, like if you've ever been, so I I go back to being the country kid, right? So if you've been around a hot fence, it's like there's a fence, but there's this wire, the wire is hooked to electricity. So as you get close to the wire, like you feel the vibration before you even touch the wire, you can feel the vibration of it. It's like that vibration is throughout the entire planet right now. Like there's this, these energy waves that are the emotions, the, the riots, the, you know, the, the weather, like all of that is kind of leading yeah. the energy. So yeah. not only are we still dealing with yes. human relationships that we have, but then we're also adding yeah. all that extra energy that's making it even energy. more complicated. Yeah. I feel. yeah. And that's where people are really, really struggling in, in how to maintain, you know, balance and feeling grounded and really the self care that needs to be kind of um, intensified right now because without that we just get sucked into that energy in ways that are not in our best interest right so um yeah that's why I'm just like promote 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 like self-care 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 and right. be really intentional about it you every know, single day now I know you and I have talked about self-care before and it's been really interesting because not only okay self-care and self-awareness are the things that I always but it's part of the the pillars of what I teach when I'm working with somebody. Mm -hmm. But what my guides brought to me the other day was self nurturing because we're Mm -hmm. seriously, nobody knows what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. We don't know, like we're seriously, everybody, it doesn't matter where you're at. You're in the unknown. We have no idea what's coming. We have Mm -hmm. no idea how things are going to change because again, because of the time that we're in, because of the year that we're in and because of the astrology, the way it is, We've been talking for, well, my guides have been talking about since January that this is when the structures as we know them are going to crumble. And at the beginning of the year, it was, they told me it was um, the structures of government, the structures of family, the structures of church, the structures of school, and all of that has happened. And so, it's happening. Yep. yeah, so whether we know it or not, there's that underlying not feeling secure, I think, which is probably amplifying a lot of the other emotions that people are feeling. Of course. Yeah. I mean, when you don't feel like you've got solid ground and you don't know what tomorrow holds, right? Like Mm -hmm. all of a sudden we can't predict what's happening and we can't make really, we can't even make plans for the future. Right. Right. Right? Um, So it's, it's very unsettling. I think that's like the best word that I can come up with. Like the tension that is just constantly there just feels really unsettling. And that's Mm -hmm. where people are really struggling. Right. Yeah. So I have, yeah, I have this little acronym that I learned and I, I I wish I remembered where I learned it, but I don't. So wherever the credit is due, I I honestly don't remember where I picked it up, but I always tell one of the things I teach my clients is halt. It's H A L T. If you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, don't make big rash decisions. Don't try (laughs) to I mean, don't like, okay, I'm really angry right now and I'm going to set a boundary because it won't be the right energy behind setting new boundaries. And with this whole idea of not only self, like, okay, so not only self-care, but if we bridge into that and say self-nurturing and self-soothing, those, Mm -hmm. that that was the new things that my guides brought to me. I really feel Mm -hmm. like that's some practical things like hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I've been drinking water, like, because the energy is so crazy. Like 
been mm-hmm. drinking way more water than, and yep. I'm already a water drinker and I tell everybody water, water, water. And they're like, Oh, my kids used to be like, Oh my God, mom, we know we'll drink the water. <laughs> But like, so I'm really always big about drink the water, you know, drink plenty of water because all of the energy, our body processes it, whether we know it or not. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we're in this, excuse my mouth, shit storm. Cause that literally like, there's no other way I know to explain what's happening right now. Um, let, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say we lost your video. (laughs) I got a phone call. (laughs) Okay. That's okay. I was like, Oh no. After all the things we had this morning, I'm like, no, don't leave. So, um, what I'm are, here, baby. I'm here. Okay, good. So what are some <laughs> other like really good practice? Because I feel like even right now, trying to make those really big changes because trying to implement boundaries is a, I, I really wouldn't tell anybody right now to try to start learning to set boundaries. I would say, do your research, start reading mm-hmm. the books, start understanding mm-hmm. them, start understanding a deeper level of compassion, start understanding what healthy relationships look like. That's where I would say to work because really Mm -hmm. with the energy, the way it is right now, I don't think trying to push good boundaries is going to be beneficial, even though we need to know how they are. And and that might Mm -hmm. change in a week, right? Because the energy is just, but right now today, I would say this is not a day to try to implement boundaries, but you could definitely start learning. Educating. Yes, Yes. I would agree with that. I think that's a great idea. And a book that I used to give out, you know, to my clients, I just bought like huge stacks of this book and would just give it out to all my clients was called Boundaries by Cloud and Townsend. I love and that book. It's, it's just like yeah. foundational. I think we all need to read it once a year, just kind of like refresh our brains. What are good boundaries? Where am I like, oh yeah, I didn't even realize I was like, my boundaries are too low with these people. I need to, so, I mean, it's just really foundational. So that's the book, you yeah. know, to just start the, the, educating yeah. yourself. Absolutely. I actually refer that book all the time um, oh, because so it's good. so good. And for those of you that are like, oh, I don't know if I can buy it, go to the library. I mean, I don't know if you can go to the library, but you can get on the app now and do the, the online. Mm-hmm. You can almost always, you can almost always get that on the library app so that you can read it mm-hmm. even for free. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. even know if libraries are open yet. Are they open? Um, it depends. Yeah. It just depends just where you depends are. in the county. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So So other than, okay, so practical things, halt, hungry, angry, lonely, tired, take care of yourself, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. self-nurturing, self-soothing, get the boundaries book, start learning what it means to have healthy boundaries and healthy relationships. Absolutely. Um, I would definitely say if there's any kind of addictions involved, one of my other really good books that it's so funny because like, I don't really have a background of addiction, so to speak, but that book for me was so foundational, like it blew my mind. And I'm like, codependent no more. Codependent no more. Yeah. I knew it. I knew I'm it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I read yeah. that book and I was like, whole, like, I was like, oh, okay. You no. Know, and I, and I recommend that to clients who are just in codependent relationships. It, there doesn't have to be an addiction involved because I think we all like, it's a fine line. Right. Between yeah. having an interdependent relationship and a really healthy connection with someone and being codependent with that person. Right. So that book is phenomenal with that. Well, and you have to think like it was written what in late 60s, early Oh, a long time ago. Yeah. So, a long so, time ago. Okay. So that was some of the problems people were dealing with back then. Well, now that no longer, you no longer have to have that addiction or the alcoholism or whatever it is to, to be see codependent. those patterns right. because back then yeah. that was the patterns that we learned. And the other thing we've been talking about is generational healing. Like I've been doing so many generational mm-hmm, shadows mm-hmm. and generational beliefs and generational, like even imprints I've seen like just energetically. And so For sure. I think it's just the more we can bring awareness to and understand yeah. all of those things, then I think it's mm-hmm. going to help us more in relationships. But how I love also, um, the mastery of love by Don Miguel Ruiz. Have you read that? Oh no, I have. I've read some of his stuff, but I haven't read that book. Yeah. He, so he wrote the four agreements. Four, yeah. The four um, agreements but I love the, the mastery of love for me. Cause there's a whole section on self love and you know, but the whole idea of mastery of love is like how to not be in that codependent relationship. So, um, and then just before I forget, I want to make sure I get this to you. If for people that are struggling with family members with mental illness, um, the National Association of Mental Illness, NAMI, um, is a great resource online, N-A-M-I. And okay. so that, that will lead people to kind of like 
re- tons and tons Figure and tons of resources of, you know, what's going to help support themselves and have those good boundaries and then help those family members. There's okay. also, so on that side of a family to family free education course, and it's like eight or 12 weeks or something like that. And it's free for family members and how to deal with other family members. So it's, I mean, that's such a great resource for people. And I, I just did not that. want to forget to address that. No, thank we you. I love that because that's yeah. what I wanted to do today was bring some practical, yeah. like yes. the woo yes. side. And then now how do we deal with it as humans? Yeah. Um, and I know that you have, um, your blog and everything too is such a great resource and your website. So I, I know we're almost yeah. out of time, even though we got started a little late, it's okay. We'll just cut it a little short. Um, but I want to make sure people know how to find you because you are, um, licensed in Colorado. So people that are around can, you can help them. Yes, um, all over I Colorado you're working on some new programs that might be yes, even yes. beyond. So I'm excited for that. So yes. how can people find you, um, mm-hmm. to see about getting an appointment with you or whatever? So, yeah, I mean, you can check out my website. It's Denver family counseling services.com. Um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, Denver family counseling. Um, and yeah, so, you know, call, Call me, inquire me. Um, my email is Leslie, L E S L E Y dot D F C S at gmail.com. Okay. So, yeah. So, and I do and that's telehealth. On your website, so, right? it's on my website. I do full time telehealth. So, anywhere in Colorado, I'm, okay. I'm open. So, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. No, I love that so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming on for me today. Like I said, this Absolutely. is a Anytime. question, but I wanted to open it up to the entire, like to everybody, just because I know that if yeah. we're finding it in the membership, then there's other people dealing with it as well. And this one just seemed too big to keep just to the membership. Um, and, and I, I think everyone is really it. triggered. We were talking about, <laughs> we were talking about that energy, you know, yeah. and so that means everyone is more easily triggered during these times. And so whatever was just kind of like, maybe low grade or at the surf, you know, just kind of like just below the surface of anxiety, depression, whatever other mental illness, things where people were struggling. Now everything is intensified because everyone is so easily triggered. Right. Okay. That totally makes sense. Okay. So that actually, I wanted to ask you before we got got off of the call, like, what are some things that you can tell, tell people or some, some way of being able to self soothe Like for me, I know that when I'm like that, I need to just go sit. I need to meditate. Mm -hmm. I need to connect with my guides. I need to pray. Um, What are some other, is there anything else that you know, as far as like how to literally like beyond self-care, we're talking about how do you self-soothe? So self-soothing, you know, think about it. Like, you know, like babies, they suck their thumb or they have a blanket, right? Like they have these like comforting ways to just really regulate their own system. And so as adults, we're not going to walk around sucking our thumb. We got to like, you know, find what really does work for us without any shame, any judgment, right? Go for a walk, breathe. I mean, breathing is the best way to self-soothe. Nice, deep, cleansing breaths, going for a walk, like I just said, but people have to find what's like going to work for them. Maybe it's just sitting down and watching a 30 minute episode of something, you know, and maybe that's does the trick calling a friend, you know, journaling. Um, these are ways that we just kind of like honor what we are and check in and say, what are do I need? Mm-hmm. What do I need? Maybe I need to scream into my pillow. I, everybody's going to be different in what is soothing for them. And I know for me, it's breathing, it's journaling, and it's walking. For me, those three are just like the thing that really helps me regulate myself. Well, and so I love it that you have, have to three. find what's right. Yeah, for them. because that that's, that's true for me. Oh, yeah. Like, depending on how, like, what kind of stress I'm in, sometimes mm-hmm. it's the prayer meditation time. Sure. Sometimes it's get outside. Sure. Sometimes sure. it's get a weighted blanket and watch Netflix. Like I'm not even it. Like sometimes that's what you've got. Absolutely. Do. And I have a weighted blanket. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love Everybody that. I should have yeah. one. <laughs> I love that thing. I'm like, I don't know if it's because when I was little, I was born in the winter. So my mom, she, they used to laugh about how many blankets she would pile on me. So I don't know if that's why I need the weight, <laughs> but I'm like, no, that, I love that it. is like the greatest thing ever. Yeah. I mean, it, it is so soothing. soothing. It, really it is. is. 
It really <laughs> is. Right. I don't care if it's 90 degrees outside. It I know. Outside. Turn on the air. Yes. <laughs> Turn on a fan, you know? Yes. yes. Awesome. Well, Leslie, thank you so, so much for coming on today. Thanks for thank having me, Jennifer. So you guys, I will get all of her information linked below the video so that you guys can find it on my website and on YouTube. Love I'm you sure. guys lots. And I will talk to everybody soon. Thanks again, Leslie, so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks.